Welcome to the Unwanted Matter miniseries. This miniseries was written and narrated by Matt Spear and published with the help of Junior Art Lab. Episode 3, Enemies Everywhere. Deep in the depth of space, the hunters walk into the temple of the master, knowing, for the first time ever, they failed him. The master had sent them down to earth to bring two brothers to him. However, things took an unexpected turn, and they attracted the attention of the CIA and took the brothers with them. A low rumble comes from the middle of the temple chamber as the hunters step in. A bright shine of purple light flashes out over their eyes. The light felt like pure anger. Hunter One swallows slowly and speaks up. I, I'm sorry, Master. We had no choice but to retreat. We, we attracted the attention of Earth law enforcement. The rumble becomes louder as the Master's voice beams out. I must have a physical form, or it is on your souls. It is clear that engaging in a fight does not work, so let's change our tactics. Don't make a scene. You know I will be watching. The hunters raise their shaking arms up and salute. In the top secret CIA base off the coast of Canada, agents patrol the hallways, grabbing snacks in the cafeteria and drinking coffee to stay awake during the long shift hours. CIA mechanics tending to vehicles like jets and planes. In the base lab, scientists inspect the asteroid. Mark and Stephen sit by the table next to the rock. Mark looks over to Victoria as she walks towards them. Her team has been inspecting the rock for hours, and they finally have some results. She sits down by the table and faces the brothers. I think we may have found something. The rock appeared to hold a powerful energy, but it was drained out of it, probably when the two of you touched it. Stephen sighs. Do you think it was that energy as it was making us feel sick? Like maybe our bodies trying to fight off a disease? I'm not sure. Whatever was within that rock had readings I've never seen before. We're going to have to do some more testing to figure out just what it was. Just then, the director of the CIA, John Cassador, walks into the room. Were either of you two feeling better now? Mark stands up. Yes, I am, thank you. And I'm going to be leaving now, too. He says this as he walks towards the door. But Cassador holds out his hand, stopping him. We may need to run a few more tests on you. Fine, but I'm going to go to the bathroom, Mark lies. Or you could stay here, Cassador replies. He's very uneasy about letting Mark leave the room. Cassador stares at Mark in the eyes, and Mark glares back. Why can't he just use the bathroom, Victoria asks. Cassador looks over to her and back to Mark. Fine, you can go, but come right back. Mark quickly exits the room, swiping the rock on his way out. He has no intention of coming back there. He is leaving. Cassador glares at Mark and walks over to some of the other scientists in the room. Stephen stares at him. Why was he so unsettled to just let Mark leave the room? Something about his reaction did not seem right to Stephen. Stephen's phone buzzes in his pocket, breaking his train of thoughts. He takes it out to find that someone has sent him an email, someone he's not familiar with. However, he was very familiar with this person in the scientific community. The email read, I am Dr. Kango. I am familiar with your condition. Come to me and I can help you. Stephen looks at the number. It only makes sense that Dr. Kango is sending him this. He studies paranormal activity, and Stephen's condition checks all the boxes for what he'd be looking for. And Stephen is a fellow scientist. Maybe he could get some more opinions on him. The email contained an address in downtown Vancouver. Stephen puts the phone back in his pocket. He doesn't need to go to some stranger when he already has all the help he needs. Mark quickly exits the room with the rock he took while Cassador had his back to him and begins sprinting towards the base exit. The CIA had been a little too helpful in this case, and for this reason, Mark questions their reliability. Something's going on. 
He arrives at the door and is about to leave when an agent stops him. Sorry, sir, but you entered the base with your brother, and you cannot leave without your brother. Mark glares at the base guard. It looks like you'll have to find Stephen. Meanwhile, Stephen is sitting in the lab, looking for where the rock has gone to. Stephen runs across the lab to ask Victoria about it. Maybe her team is working on it. As he approaches her, he sees Victoria talking with Cassador. She is shaking his hand and smiling brightly. Stephen walks over to her, just as Cassador walks away, and Victoria walks up to Stephen with a huge smile. Good news! The boss just promoted me! I'm now the head of the scientific division! Stephen smiles as well. Congratulations! Now we can make a higher income! This will be great for Billy! I'm going to go see him! The smile on Victoria's face begins to disappear, and her eyes become watery. Um, about that, Stephen? Um, maybe it'll be best if I hold on to him for now, just until we figure things out with the rock. But why? What did I do? Stephen asks. Nothing. It's just better this way. Victoria walks away. A huge amount of pressure builds inside Stephen. He takes a big breath in as Victoria walks away. He tilts his head to the side. Why would she do something like this? Stephen looks around the room. He has never been this alone before. He begins blinking furiously, holding in his tears. That's not an answer, Stephen yells angrily. Victoria turns around. I'm sorry, Stephen. It's just, it has to be like this. No, that's not an answer. Why? Why do you want to take my son away from me? Every scientist in the room turns to face them. Victoria looks around. She's quite embarrassed about how things have turned. We'll talk about this later, okay? I don't want to make a scene in public. Victoria says as she walks out of the room, Why would Victoria do something like this? That just doesn't seem right. This isn't the kind of person she is. Maybe Mark was right. Something strange is going on. Stephen exits the lab and begins looking for Mark. Mark is walking through the empty halls at the base. All of the agents are in the cafeteria for breakfast. Mark needs to find Stephen. It is the only way to get out. Mark stops abruptly. From the next room over, he hears a voice coming from the room. Mark presses his ear against the wall and is able to make out voices. It was Cassador talking to another agent that Mark is unfamiliar with. Are you sure the brothers are convinced? Cassador asks. They should be. Stephen has complete faith in us, but the other one's more skeptical. Cassador sighs. <sighs> Just as long as he does not figure out what we are planning. That energy could be the key to building weapons that we have only dreamed of. Is the dissection prepared yet? We should be ready in a few hours, sir. Good. Their sacrifices will be worth the benefit. Mark gasps in horror. A light falls from the ceiling. Mark looks up to find the support cable to the light has disappeared. What was that? Cassador yells from behind the door. Footsteps begin walking towards it. Mark runs down the hall and away from sight of the door, just as Cassador opens it and looks around. He spots the light on the floor. Wary, he closes the door and continues his plans for the brothers. When he is done with them, the United States will be the most powerful country in the world. Stephen is walking around the base, looking for Mark. He has to still be here. Stephen bumps into someone as he walks. He looks for the person to find it is Mark. Just the person he needs. Stephen grabs Mark and takes him to a janitor closet. One of the few places on the base that does not have any security cameras. You said you wanted to leave? I'm willing to help. Mark looks at Stephen in the eyes. There's something else you should know. I was right all along. The CIA planned to dissect us. Stephen stares at the ground. The pieces start coming together inside his head. If the CIA was planning on killing them, then they must have promoted Victoria as a way of thanking her for delivering them. It would also explain why she did not want them to be near his son. She did not want Billy to have to watch his father get torn apart. The more Stephen puts the pieces together, the more fearful he becomes. He falls to his knees. He keeps breathing in and out, clutching his chest and sweating. How could he have been so blind? How could he have not seen it? It was right in front of him all this time. It was Victoria who suggested that Mark come over to the condo with the rock. And it was Victoria who called the CIA. She has been planning this from the beginning. It may have been Cassador's idea, but Victoria is just at fault. He puts his hands in his head. This is too good to be true for Mark. 
For a change, his brother needs him and is asking for help. I tried leaving before, but they would not let me leave without you. If we both leave together, then we can escape. Stephen nods and slowly stands up, trying to gather himself. He is very nauseous. He and Mark quickly exit the closet and begin sprinting towards the base exit. Earlier, I got an email from a respected scientist. We can go to him when we get out of here. Mark rolls his eyes. What is it with Stephen and his scientist friends? They arrive at the door. Mark stares the agent in the eyes. I now have my brother. We are leaving now. Together. The guard slowly nods his head and opens the door. He cannot risk calling security until the brothers are out of his earshot. Stephen and Mark walk through the base door. The guard takes out his walkie-talkie in pure panic the moment they walk out. Code Red! Code Red! They are leaving the base! An alarm goes off from the entire base. CIA agents storm around the brothers. Stephen surrenders his hands, but Mark tries to make a run for it. He has not come this far only to get caught. He runs out of the base entrance, but the moment he does, the agents use their tasers on him. Mark feels a sharp blast of pain as the tasers hit him head on and he falls to the ground, unconscious. Mark wakes to find himself strapped onto a table. He slowly opens his eyes. Everything is blurry around him. However, the shine of the keg lights above him almost are blinding. He squints his eyes. He feels very dizzy and resists the pull of falling back asleep again. As his vision begins to clear, he takes in his surroundings. He is in a white room full of medical equipment. On the table next to him, there are several pointed tools for cutting and dissecting, including dangerously sharp needles, scissors, knives, jackhammers, axes, and chainsaws. Mark turns his head over to find Stephen on the next table over, still unconscious. Do you know the full extent of your power? A voice asks Mark. Mark turns his head to find John Cassador standing over him. Why should I even answer that question? Mark spits at Cassador. Cassador takes a seat beside Mark. The two of you have amazing abilities, and I want them. Our scientists have analyzed the security footage from the condo, and it appears that you both can mess with matter. Stephen can create it, and you can destroy whatever was in that rock has power we have never seen before. The only thing I cannot figure out is why those intruders at the condo wanted you. Mark stares at Cassador. It is clear that he is insane. He clearly wants to get power within his grasp and is willing to stop at nothing to get it. Mark glares into Cassador's eyes, not saying a word. Fine, you can play like that. We will find out what we need to know one way or another. Cassador stands up and leaves the room. The CIA doctor grabs the chainsaw and turns it on. Mark squirms on the table. He is trying to escape. He needs to. Fear grips in Mark's throat. He is completely helpless. Mark stares at the chainsaw. Something Cassador said got his attention. He could destroy matter. Maybe he could make the chainsaw disappear. He focuses on the sound of the chainsaw and closes his eyes. He can feel the vibration of the chainsaw get closer, and he can feel the wind coming from it get closer. He fears instant contact as the chainsaw gets closer and closer to him. He feels anger for the CIA for doing this to him. How could they? The sound of the chainsaw stops abruptly, and he opens his eyes. The chainsaw and the table straps are gone. A rush of relief flows through him. His heart stops beating as quickly. To his left, the straps on Stephen's table have also disappeared as Stephen wakes up. He groans groggily. The effects of the tasers will take a few more minutes to wear off. The doctor flashes a gun at Mark. Mark grabs it from his hand as Stephen struggles to his feet. He is still very dizzy and his vision is blurry, just as Mark was. Stephen's heads feel like it's spinning around. He is very cold and his back is stiff from where he was tased. Mark knocks out the doctor with a punch to the face, and two of them run to the doorway and open it. Several agents are rushing towards them. The security cameras must have recorded them, and the agents are on their way to subdue them. Mark and Stephen slam the door shut and prop one of the tables against it. That bought them some time, but not much. The agents bang against the door. 
What do we do? Mark asks Stephen panically. Stephen's mind braces, processing all that has happened. He looks around the room for anything that could be useful. It would be nice if he had some science equipment, something he could make a solution out of. He closes his eyes and imagines all the materials he would need to make a C4 powder. A whoosh comes from the table. He opens his eyes to find the chemicals he needs to make it. He begins mixing them together. Mark notices what he is doing. He finally understands why Stephen has always wanted him to become a scientist teacher. He wanted Mark to be able to apply his knowledge in a way that could help people, just like science is helping them now. It's ready. Stand back. Stephen's words snap Mark back into the present as he takes a step back. Stephen throws the chemical mixture against the wall, and it blows a hole, leading directly to the garage. The CIA agent starts scraping the door open. Mark and Stephen run into the garage. Stephen jumps into the driver's seat on one of the cars and turns it on. Mark runs into the passenger seats. Bullets hit the side of the car. Mark turns around to find Cassador shooting at them at the other end of the garage. Mark holds his hands towards him, and Cassador's gun disappears. Mark hops into the car, and Stephen hits the gas. The car drives away as the brothers escape Cassador's reach. Cassador slams the wall nearby. He failed to dissect the brothers, and the power he wanted now is lost. Maybe in some miracle he could track them down, but it is unlikely, impossible even. He will have to report his failure to the president. Most likely he will be discredited and fired for what happened. Anger boils in this chest. How did he let this happen? The CIA car approaches the driveway at the door of Dr. Kango. Stephen exits the car, but Mark remains inside of it. Why should we try and cure ourselves? We're not sick anymore. We can do things we never even dreamed of. Stephen leans by the window. We don't know what the long-term effects of it might be, and we cannot trust anything the CIA told us. We need to get another professional opinion, Stephen explains. As much as Mark does not want to admit it, Stephen is right. He gets out of the car and rings the doctor's doorbell. The doctor answers, Hello, Mark and Stephen. I've been expecting you. I'm glad you decided to answer my invitation. Please come in and lie down on the table. I have been waiting for you anxiously. The doctor leaves Mark and Stephen into a living room with two tables on the side. Mark and Stephen lie down on it only to find clamps attaching themselves to Mark and Stephen immediately. They struggle against the clamps, but they are on too tight. Are you with the CIA? Stephen asks, concerned. Don't worry. They are no longer any concern of yours. Dr. Kango's skin begins to change. He slowly changes into shiny armor. It was one of the hunters. The other three hunters enter the room. Hunter One smiles proudly. The master was right. The long game does work better. A cold sweat drips down on the brothers' faces. Their blood goes cold. Hunter One leans into the brothers and hisses in their ears. It is time for the two of you to meet the master. How will the brothers escape from this mess? Will they break free or will they be taken to the master to have their souls consumed? Come back next time in the Unwanted Matter miniseries to find out. Thank you for listening.